Are we too close? You were described to me as Bauer Becking's secret weapon in the last edition of the race. You were the person who, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very complimentary, but you were the person who um, managed to get the team onto the right track mentally. Okay. Is that fair? Oh uh, yeah, and they did a lot of stuff uh, themselves. Right, so in terms of what you're trying to build, in yeah. terms of a team, the personalities that are coming together, is, would you be able to describe yes. the perfect team? Okay, first of all, it is a diverse team. And not just gender diversity or nationality or race, but also cognitive diversity, neurodiversity, okay. different behavioral styles. Because when you, when you have um, a diverse team, you have a lot of perspectives on the table. And with a lot of perspectives, you can build more complex solutions. And that is why leadership, um, uh, which is not about dominance and ego and whatever, but it is inclusive leadership. Eh? You want to engage or to share leadership with each other. Uh, that's, that's the second uh, quality of, uh, of a really high performing team. I think the third one is personal leadership. Uh, as a teammate, as a sailor, is a, you need to have the courage to speak up and come with solutions, ideas, decisions, plans. But if you don't dare to bring them to the table, it might have grown into a missed opportunity. What do you think the best course of action is? Well, obviously change it out, and then I think all we can potentially do is leave it on the beach. We've been looking at the boats today. What's going to break? Is that, that mast going to break? Is this going to capsize the boat? And we always talk about the equipment, the equipment, the equipment. Yeah. How close are the sailors going to be to breaking? Okay, good question. Because compared to the Volvo 65, those Imokas, that's a whole different class. And in the Volvo 65, uh, people are used to push the boat really hard. And, and in those Imokas, you kind of have to get to learn the boat because you build it yourself and everything is innovative. So you have to kind of grow into that boat. What is the edge of breaking it and pushing it? The other thing is, um, because there's only a smaller crew, yeah. in a way more, well, how can we describe this um, and be respectful, primitive, primitive boats. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No yeah. bunks, no. no nothing. No. So, um, uh, and there's a lot of noise and uh, extremely... Well, that was, so that was, that was something I, I wanted you to talk about. Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing. I can't imagine what it would be like to be locked in a box yeah. with somebody banging the yeah. lid the whole time, yeah. someone shaking yeah. the lid the whole time and yeah. you can't get out. And I was talking to one of the sailors and they were saying that the noise from the foil, yeah. they can hear it yeah. days after yes. they're on the boat when yes. they close their eyes. Yes. But I think the noises of the foils are beautiful. It sounds like mermaids in the sea. So, so, and that's a very important mentally thing. When you frame uh, noises and, and slamming, when you frame it positive, right. it is way better, to, easier right. to deal okay. with it. So you're going all the way down to that level. Uh, of course. How important are you taking sleep for the sailors? Very important. You don't get a lot of sleep. It's not just that it is physically unhealthy, but it also is mentally unhealthy. It starts with um, lack of attention. So yeah. that's, that's dangerous for making mistakes. When decision making slows down, or you make very rapid decisions on your routine, those aren't always the most complex decisions for complex situations. Mm. So, so what we do train is how do you make decisions? How do you communicate? How do you collaborate? So how do you constantly improve your teamwork even during the race when you are tired? You say Charlie is a good skipper. He's got a really good... Um, leadership, style. Yeah. leadership style. That's 
what he appears to do. Yeah. That's his yeah. benchmark. Percentage-wise, mm -hmm. in reality, mm -hmm. how close is he to that? Is he 100% that good? I hope, I sincerely hope he isn't 100% because when it's going to get really tough and extremely dangerous, every leader has to say, and, and now we are going to do this and everybody will automatically listen. That's, that's why you are a skipper. Okay, so in those situations, you have to be the control freak and the dominant, <laughs> the dominant leader and whatever. But on an Imoka, you need every voice to be the best of a team. You, you can't do stuff by yourself because it's way too complex. Even more complex, in my opinion, but what do I know than on a Volvo 65? This team is a team of nice people because when you, you have to collaborate, yeah. you have to optimize yourself and each other. So it's two tasks. Yeah. It's about personal leadership, leadership and teamwork. And, and if you don't like that, you are not on a boat like this. It's the difference between taking an athlete on a sports psychology journey and the challenge for me of teaching my three-year-old to brush her teeth. Uh, She's yes. not interested in learning how to brush her teeth. No. But luckily, Charlie Enright is very interested yeah. About what goes on. And he brushes his teeth. And he... I know you're about to go out in the water. I know you're yeah. about to wave goodbye to your boat. I will let you go. Yeah. But we will speak soon. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>